Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick, and we are back. I'm going to be covering Swords of Legend online today. I have four beta keys to give away. Um, if you would like one, just comment below and subscribe. I will give away them ar tonight around 10 um, Eastern. It's currently 11 a.m. Eastern, so I will give them away sometime around then. Won't be a lot of competition from Warum, so just comment below, and um, you'll have a fairly good chance. I assume we might have, like, 10 comments, 50, I don't know, 10 maybe for these, so pretty high chance to get them, but I wanted to go over this today, it's a game I want to play, and I will be playing this weekend, the beta times have been announced, so let's get into that, I don't know why this page is opening like this, it's opening like full screen, which is fine, but I don't know why it did it like this, but this has the actual beta times on it, so it will be starting 8 a.m., uh, Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific, so unfortunately, my first video of this will not go up until around 8 or 9 p.m. on Friday, because I have a very long shift at work, unfortunately. I was hoping this would be similar to the PSO2, and it would start at like 8 or 9 p.m. on Friday, but that's all right. We'll get a video out as soon as I get home. Uh, you can click the PDF link here. I'm actually going to close out of this because I already have the PDF open. But yes, they tweeted this out about an hour ago, so it'll be about three or four hours ago uh, for you guys. I'll include a link to their Twitter, the, uh, the GameForge website if you want to buy and download it. You can also buy it on Steam to get the beta, key, the beta um, if you did not end up with a beta key or whatnot. So, But like I said, if you want to win one, just comment down below. Um, I have four, and I really just need to give them away to someone. So, here we go. This is their very first patch notes. I'm not going to, like, too in-depth this. It's long. It's 31 pages. So, we're just going to look through it and uh, see if we see anything interesting pertaining to it. So, this is their first patch notes for the West. So, this covers the beta period. We already went over that. It is 80 gigs to download. It is big. Um, I'm hoping... Uh, the game client, which needs to be downloaded completely in order to launch. I'm hoping that is the game, and we don't have to download it again um, for a full release, or that it's bigger. Um, so thousands can be online simultaneously on the servers. Servers will be added. So, okay, so they have plans for potential more servers. I like that. A lot of games don't plan for more servers, and then they get into it. They get into a jam, so that that's good to see. Um, in progress and known problems, translation text, uh, reaching the maximum level will give you tips and tricks in case you run out of story quests while leveling. Please note that this is, this topic is still under discussion. Okay, that's nice. Planned changes. Okay, so they already have changes that they have planned. Alliance menu, Swordmaster Adventure, that's the, so they're going to update and improve the story. That's nice. Uh, display of text, display of minigame maps, recruitment, book of aeons, and the fishing book. So here we go. I'm interested in this. So I did watch a couple of videos on the classes, and I think I pretty much have it narrowed down to two classes. Uh, but we have, um, so let's see here. It's possible to play classes in two masteries. Okay, you can switch back and forth freely between these masteries. Um... As long as you are not in combat, the second mastery is unlocked during the tutorial and should be available to you for the first instance at approximately level 13. Okay, so each class has a specific class area, which is kind of nice. So the first one is Spell Swords. Their class area is Sunken Jade Lake, and you can be a ranged sword artist or a melee blade storm. Reaper is Ranged Assassin or Healer Occultist. So they did change this. It used to be Support, so I probably will not do it. I was going to do Support Occultist, but since it's more of a healer, I probably won't do it. I might still give Assassin a try, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, but the, let's see here, Chasm of Remote Darkness is their exclusive area. Summoner, we have Ranged uh, Nature's Wrath and Healer Nuwa's Blessing. Their exclusive area is Valley of the Sea of Fra Fragrant Flowers. We have the Bard, um, Range Dissonance, and Healer Harmony. So they changed the word support to healer for all of these, which is interesting, because I believe on their trailer it was uh, support, not uh, healer. And then their special area for the Bards is Mountain of Wondrous Creation, Berserkers, Melee Slayer, and Tank Drunken Master, the exclusive class area for Berserkers, is Beautiful rup rup Rapture Quarter, I can't read. Uh, Spear Master, Melee, Tank, 
uh, melee general tank phalanx. I kind of like the, I think it was the phalanx one. Exclusive area for the Spear Masters is the Star Tempest. So I think we're going to end up being either the ranged assassin or the ranged uh, rat, nature's wrath. Those were the two that I think that I like the most right now because it turned out that the supports were all healers, so I don't really want to play them. So race and gender, all six classes can be played with a male or female character. Good. No gender locks. There are no limitations on this on this character slots during the beta. You will have six. Wow, six character slots per server. That's a lot of that's a lot of uh, characters that you can make on the on the beta. That's nice. Story quests. So. Let's see here. Quests in various area by following chat. You can reach. So there's nine chapters of the story. I don't know how much will be available in the beta to play, but nine chapters plus the prologue. So really, it's ten chapters. But that's nice. Um, hopefully, it's a good story. I like a I like a good story in my MMOs, which is odd because I play Black Desert that has absolutely no story. But um, <laughs> uh, I do like a good story. You can view the quest you've accepted at any time with the L key, M key, then right click to move up a level. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so here's our first look at the map. It's not a great picture, but there's Heavenly Ridge, District of Changjin, Cloud Rise. I don't know if that's like the complete map. I'm hoping that it's open map, like I could walk from here over to here if I really wanted to. Not, like, instanced. Um, addition to the main stories, biographies are also, which are unlocked via a range of different mechanisms by reaching levels, using items, completing story quests. They will allow you to enjoy additional background stories. Overview of the available biographies can be viewed by pressing Control L. That's nice. So you can, you can do, um, you can look at, like, uh, let's see here. They're going to give you, like, lore backstories, which that, that's going to be cool. Other quests. So two main quest strands. There are many more stories and tales to discover. You will find many more quests in the various... Hopefully those are more story development and they aren't just, like, random side quests of nothingness. Uh, max level, the aim is to, is progress through cultivation with all players starting at beginner level 1 and leveling up to beginner level 36. At 36, you'll have to complete a quest series that will take you to student level 1. This is the maximum level for the time being. Higher cultivation goals will be added in future updates. Okay. Reaching max level. Story and story quests play an important role in the Swords of Legend Online and will guide you from the start on your way to the maximum level. Depending on the speed of your progress, however, you may need to play other content such as dungeons. So there are dungeons, that's good. Uh, Blood Ruvia, Turquoise Lantern, heroic events at various levels until the story quest continues. Here are a few quick tips. Make sure that you always complete the daily quests and tutorials for new content in the cultivation menu, completing instances, the frostbitten path in the Weichen Highlands in particular rewards you with a whole load of XP as well as strong equipment, biographies, the easy blood Ruvia opponents can be completed again each day if necessary. Okay, gear and functions. Your equipment will be split in two. There will be sets for PvE content and oh, that's very cool. I like that. I like that a lot. So you can so, like, on, well, I guess it's not that big of a deal on BDO. You can have your PvP armor set, or PvP gear set, and then your PvE gear set. But this is kind of nice. You'll just have it equipped, and depending on what you're doing, I'm assuming there'll be a quick, easy switch, or it will just auto-switch. Um, let's see here. Oh, I guess, okay, maybe it's not talking about, I don't think it's, okay, I think it's kind of like BDOs. Like, they have the the like off intent and the zarka one's a little bit more pvp focused one's more pve fo okay i think that's how it's gonna work okay i thought it was gonna be something like okay you can equip this gear for pvp and this gear for pve and you would be able to switch back and forth freely and quickly um the game allows you to save up to six different gear configurations without it hanging around in your inventory this is important as there may be equipment later on that has different stats depending on your mastery okay pve equipment is mostly obtained through quests dungeons and insignias you receive basic gear for pvp content from the pvp tutorial however you can only play pvp once you have completed the tutorial follow that earn prestige coins on battlefields and arenas to get better equipment that's cool so there's a look at their armor so it looks like we have two rings a necklace is that like a 
a headpiece. Is that like a headband? And then, I don't know what that is. I'm just going to guess their earrings, probably, or something like that. Then we have armor. Is that... So that's like armor, gloves, belt, pants, and shoes, and then whatever these three items in the middle, and I'm guessing that's probably like class-related. Depending on their level and rarity, items of equipment can be upgraded, enhancement, enchantment. This process is always successful as long as you have the required... Oh, that's good. So... Black Desert, which is the main game I play, is percentage-based, and I always hated that. So as long as you have the correct items, you'll be able to automatically do it. Um, there's a number of other ways you can upgrade gear. For example, with talismans that grant your gear other bonuses or sockets that can be filled. Astral Essence, you can assign astral points to unlock additional bonuses and effects for your classes. And Mastery, the menu, so kind of like skill points, will have pets, so that's cool. Uh, visual, additionally. So, pets are just cosmetic. You will get a pet whose appearance can be customized. Pets do not fight and are mainly visual in nature. You can then use, uh, so they're literally just interesting. They're just, um, kind of a aesthetically pleasing part of the game. They don't have a function. Choose between damage, healing, dealt, Know your groups. Okay, so combat stats, simple. Communication, social features, chat, friends list, obviously, and a basic stuff there. Alliances is your guilds. Um, is there anything special about them? I don't think so. Let's keep going. So there is a character, Dragon Star List. Extensive rankings are included directly in the game and can be viewed with just a few clicks. To do so, simply click on the icon on the far right beneath the mini-map, and then select the statistic you're you'd like to look at. For example, you can see the player with the most ooh players with the strongest connections to NPCs, as well as competitive information such as the group that completed a certain dungeon the fastest and the best players in each of the club. Ooh, that's fun. That's cool. I like that. I really like. I really like when um, games do that. Um, Really old game that I used to play, Conquer Online, that, that game used to have, like, rankings, and you could see server best, and all of that different stuff. It was, I really liked that game. That was, like, one of my, that's probably my all-time favorite game, for being honest, when I was, like, a, I played that when I was a kid for hours on hours on hours. Uh, Emo City, so what is this, Dungeons? Okay, so we have, okay, so cool. Gonna go over a little bit of Dungeons here, Emo City and Wuzaho. Um, they got the recommended gear score levels, the recommended levels, um, entered, can summon a battle companion for this adventure, suggested four to ten players. I said, I mean, it says can be entered with a group of between four, so you couldn't enter these solos. Did I have any solo instance dungeoned? Um... So it looks like for loot drops, the hard difficulty, which is what which is what you're gonna want to run eventually, is once per week. Nightmare Temple of Mercy is also four to ten players, and it's once per week as well. Frostbitten Path is four to ten as well, and it's once per week. Uh, Chew Prison is four to ten. And once per week. Doesn't have an easy mode, only normal and hard. Raging River Ruins, 4 to 10. Once per week, only normal and hard. Notes about dungeons. Uh, the recommended gear level does not restrict to assets, and you can enter a dungeon without having reached this level. However, you may find the dungeon more, obviously. The possible loot only describes your personal loot in the dungeon. Each player will receive an item for themselves. Personal boot. Personal boot. It's got to be personal loot. However, other items may also be received that aren't listed here. The dungeon codex via the menu bar shows you a complete list of possible rewards. Select the instance difficulty and the boss to see the details. By loot drop limit, we wish to explain that the various instances do not always drop rewards following a successful completion. You can enter dungeons without any limitations to practice the battle or to support other players. But harder dungeons only have loot once per day or week. So it says to practice the battle or to support other players players i wonder i wonder if they're gonna have a matchmaking similar to like bless unleashed had a had a matchmaking that i've played final fantasy 14 they all had like dungeon searching which would be nice other pve modes so this is my type of thing blood ruvia 
Become a bounty hunter and kill one in monsters on your own or any... Oh, awesome. That's cool. So you go and, like, take quests to kill certain mon... Okay, I like that. I like that. Um, and weekly rewards for completing it. You can also use the prestige you receive to purchase very... Oh, nice. And cosmetic content. It's very nice. Envoy the Turquoise Lantern. It's your job to find ghosts wandering the soul journey world and accompany them to the underground palace. Use the Underworld Lantern to enter the soul journey world. This is a parallel dimension where you will meet... Okay, so this is, like interesting content you also find ghosts on your map of the region some of them can be subdued alone others only with the support of a group so awesome so you kind of like fight a ghost and then you subdue them and send them to the underworld uh, hey i'm all for whatever pv pve content i can get heroic events there are heroic events in certain areas that can complete to earn extra experience points and gold they are highlighted as green icons on the corresponding regional map if they have been unlocked the events are accepted automatically when you are close by they are completed automatically once all tasks are finished successfully. So awesome. There's no turn in. You just go ahead and go do them. And then that's that's it. But it looks like from this picture, I would guess they're like, oh, this boss spawned. Go kill him. Or this big enemy spawned. Go kill him. Or this pack of enemies spawned. Go kill them type of thing. Uh, battlefields, Fort Haiju. Capture the flag in the middle of this battlefield surrounded by water. Here, 10 players per group. Char Is this PvP? Is this, P is this PvP or PvE? This seems like PvP content. In a race for supremacy? I'm assuming that has to be PvP con- Yeah, this has to be PvP content, right? There's no way you're playing 10v10 where there's no, like, <laughs> killing anybody. I have to assume that's PvP content. Realm of the Five Elements, 15-15, capture and hold bases, so kinda- That's kinda fun. As many elemental caves as possible. I'm hoping this just has straight matchmaking. I don't have a lot of friends that play MMORPGs. Most of my friends I know from sports games or, or like, first-person shooters and stuff like that. Or they're just IRL friends. They don't really play MMOs. But I'd love to play, like, some of this. But So hopefully it just has, like, regular matchmaking. Land of Emerald Clouds in this Battle Royale, Battle Royale mode. You begin with minimal equipment and the map gets smaller and smaller. Grab loot in the battle arena to begin more, be, to become more powerful. So, your typical, uh, Battle Royale. Interesting. I kind of like this. It's kind of got an entry time. It's not running all the time. So, I think it'll be heavily competitive, which will be fun. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 to 11 p.m. Saturdays and Sunday, 1 to 11 p.m. Obviously, they don't have the time zone there, so I don't actually know what that is my time. So, different rewards. Battle in the sands. Face off against monsters and possessed opponents in this desert training ground. Um... You fight in small groups first before two groups of 10 players are matched up to face each other. Ooh, that's cool. One player from each team is turned into a monster and their teammates must heal them using runes. The first group to obtain three runes wins the match. Okay, this is... A, they have a lot of content here. 3v3 arenas. This is... They've got a lot of content in here. They have league matches. Placement matches. Wow. Wow. This is a lot. Battle squads, other PvP move, modes, obviously you can duel the Chanjan or the Changen battle arena. So they have a separate battle arena, open world. Uh, what's this? This skill puts you in rampage. This costs a one. Okay, so just open world PvP. Good and evil uh, key. Can killing other players. Okay, so pretty much normal. Leisure activities, explosive escape. Oh my gosh, there is so much in this game. Explosive escape, when the leisure game is available, you can enter the mini game alone or in a group of five players via the corresponding menu. Wow, this is insane. These are just different mini games. That's really fun. Return to the Shadow Realm. Makes me think of Yu-Gi-Oh! When the leisure game is available. So just another leisure game. So these are just kind of fun games that you can play with people. Game of Eternity. Card game. Oh my gosh, they have just everything. Natural scientists discover treasures throughout the world by activating your treasure compass. Uh, Book of Aeons. Important story. Again, PCs are listed and you can improve your connection with them. To do so, you can gift them certain items. So upgrade your NPC levels. I'm sure that'll come with bonuses. Many more activities to these specifically highlighted. There are many more. 
Compose your own music, gather sheet music, try out the mentor and novice system, complete hundreds of achievements, collect items and emotes, prove your companions by crafting gear for them. This is insane. If this all works out as planned, this game's going to be insane. Each player gets to call a floating island their home. You get a home in this game? Oh my gosh. I love houses. Um, Black Desert's housing thing was not my favorite. I just didn't... It's just not my favorite thing. It's fun. It's just not my favorite. I love the housing on, like, Conquer Online and all of that. That's my one MMO that I'm always going to refer to because it was the one that I put the most time and effort. And then I took, like, a 10-year break from MMOs before I returned for Black Desert. But, yeah. Obtaining Residence... So it looks like there's a quest that costs 200 gold. Can develop your own residence over weeks and months by taking part in short daily activities. We'll teach you more and more recipes for crafting furniture, decorative items. Also expand the area you can build on. That's awesome. This is this game. This game might be. This game might be it. Unlockable content. Play music. Level four wooden stake that you can test your DPS rotations on. Level eight is a fishing pond. Go fish at your home. Hot spring. Take a bath alone or with friends. This is just insane. Collecting and crafting, not really my thing. I'm not super into collecting and crafting, but that is a ton there. Elixirs. This is going to be a lot of work. I'm going to have to learn. It's going to be at school. Chinese dietics. Find and use mysterious recipes to craft fortifying dishes. Collect and fish the required materials and strengthen yourself and your team with delicious delicacies. You will receive a few recipes in the tutorial for the system. You'll obtain more through specific biographies and as instance rewards. Expand your culinary repertoire and become the best chef in the whole of Shenzhou. Wow, that is 31 pages of an absolutely insane amount of content. And they don't even list everything, as they say. So this game, if it pans out as, as it appears like it's going to, this has a ridiculous amount of content. Like, an insane amount of content. I didn't even read everything, and this took me 20 minutes to go through. Just an absolutely crazy, crazy amount of stuff. Um, I am so very excited now to give this a try. We've got a lot of beta details. Um, this one goes 21st to the 25th of May, and then we have a June 1st to June 8th beta. And then, according to them, it releases shortly after... I would guess mid-July, late July, early August, somewhere around there. Like somewhere between like July 10th to August 10th. We'll get it somewhere in there. It would be my would be my best guess, but oh my gosh, I'm excited for this now after reading that. Um, like I said, beta key, if you want to get in on this, just leave a comment below. I will pick some winners and um, and message you. I think messaging on on YouTube is fairly easy. I'll I'll reply to your comment and tell you you're a winner, so you'll know, and then you can check your your YouTube um your YouTube uh da, 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 inbox. Or if you want me to DM it to you on Twitter, I can do that too. Uh, just leave your Twitter and your comments. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.